Hello, orchestra students. Today's lesson is about preparing your instrument. Let's begin with violin and viola. Step one, where's your instrument? Oh, there it is. Pick up the instrument by the handle. If you have a strap, always put the strap onto your shoulder after using the handle. Please never pick up the instrument by the strap. These corners can get pulled out if you continue to yank on them, always by the handle, like a suitcase. Step two, carry the instrument safely to your seat. Oh, here's my seat. Violin and viola players set their instrument on the right side of the chair. Handle faces the sky. Step three, lay the instrument gently on the ground. See the handle? It faces the chair you sit on. Step four, we do the latches. Some cases have a zipper and a latch. Some cases have just a zipper. Step five, we gently open the case. Usually, there will be enough room for your case to open flat. Now we see our instrument and our bow. If you're a fourth grader, we're going to leave the bow alone for now. If you're a fifth grader, we will prepare the bow in a moment. For all students who are violin and viola, we pick up the instrument by the neck. This is the strongest part of the instrument. We lay it flat across our lap. The next thing that we do is we put on our shoulder pad. Some shoulder pads are shaped like this, and others are a flat green square. The rubber band on a violin and viola goes from the end button to this corner. It will always be on the same side that the jaw rest is on. Some people call that the chin rest. Safely across your lap with one hand keeping it steady. We lift up the rubber bands and slide the pad under. See how the thick end is here in the middle of the instrument and the skinny end is on the outside of the instrument. Always on the same side of the instrument as the jaw rest. And then we wait for the next step. <clears throat> violin and violas putting the instrument to our jaw. We want our face straight out from our heart. When we bring the instrument to our landing zone on our shoulder, we do not turn towards it, but we let our head say yes to ice cream, and we let our jaw land on the jaw rest, like this. Test for on the shoulder, Fit is here. Mine's a little slippery, so I'm going to make an adjustment and push it nice and snug into the space underneath my violin. My necklace might be getting in the way too. Be careful of earrings and jewelry, especially as you take the instrument away from your head. If they get caught, they can pull and hurt. That's a better fit for me. Violins and violas, putting the instrument away. When we put the instrument away, first we carefully remove the shoulder rest. I should not hear this sound. That means you did it not so carefully. Always do it carefully. And your rubber band will last a long time, and so will your shoulder rest. Put our shoulder rest away, and then we carefully put the instrument back the same way we got it. Hold it by the neck, slowly bring it down to your case, and fit it in to its spot. Then we close the lid, we latch our latches, and we 
bring the instrument to the suitcase position. <clears throat> Please don't close your case or open your case when it's in the suitcase position. If you do, this can happen. It can open like a clamshell and sometimes the instrument can spill out. This case is very snug, so that's not a danger. When we're ready to put our instrument away, we carefully pick up the instrument by the handle. If we'd like to use our shoulder strap, we put that on next. And then, we put it on the shelf. For fifth graders, we will prepare with the bow. Here's our process. We take the instrument out of its case, we put its strings down and hold it safe. We get our shoulder rest out and slide it into place. We check the fit and the feel of our instrument. Notice I haven't played a note yet. I'm just getting the instrument ready. The instrument is ready. Now I will get the bow ready. I spin the spinner on the case and gently pull the bow out. I like to hold the frog by the left hand and tighten the bow with my right. If your right hand strong, or left hand strong, excuse me, then you may want to do it a different way. Righty tighty, we tighten the bow. For a violin and viola, we imagine a pencil fitting between the hair and the middle of the stick. Now we want to rosin our bow. This year, my plan is to have every case get its own piece of rosin. Please be careful with rosin because it's very fragile. Rosin is made from crystallized tree sap. It's usually got some other special ingredients, but basically, it's just a crystal, and it's very fragile in the same way. If you drop it on the floor, or even carpet, sometimes it can shatter. So always treat this like precious, like a precious substance, and we don't want it to crack. Rosining the bow. Don't scratch the surface of rosin. Some teacher may have told you to do that, but it's not actually necessary. The friction from the bow hair should be enough to get rosin started. First off, to get rosin on a bow, it does have to be firm hair. You have to have the bow tightened. Let's do the pencil check. Can you imagine a pencil going in between there? Good. Please don't actually put a pencil there, and please don't actually use your finger. Just imagine it. Now I have my bow hold on the bow, I have my bow hair on the rosin, and I'm going to draw that rosin, that bow across the rosin. I like to keep the rosin still because it's like I'm practicing my slow bow strokes. I can even imagine that I'm in a different string by playing on the angle or the other angle. It's a great way to get your bow warmed up just by rosining the bow. Ten strokes every day is about all you need. If you practice for ten minutes and you can't see because the air is filled with white smoke, you might have used too much rosin. Be careful with that. And remember, even though I call it a rosin cake, don't eat it. Now I can pick up my instrument and my bow and I'm ready for the lesson. When putting our instrument away for fourth and for fifth graders who play violin and viola, the first thing I like to do is get the instrument out of the way. So I set it down before I take off my shoulder pad. And then very important, I loosen my bow hair. We want the bow hair to turn loose and floppy, and sometimes it will touch the stick and a few hairs may come loose. This is a perfectly loose bow, and we must do this every day. First, the tip of my bow, my bow finds the bow cave, and then I move the spinner in between the stick and the hair, and I flip it closed to keep it safe. Now, my viola, or violin, needs the shoulder rest to be removed. I take it away, put my shoulder rest in the case and hold on to my violin or viola, 
and then I carefully put my violin or viola back in the case. I shut, I latch, I turn the case on its side. Now I'm ready to put it away. When it's my turn, I pick up my instrument like a suitcase and try not to get stuck to my chair. If I'd like to use the strap, I put it on from here. The cello and the bass cases have lots of ways to carry them. There's the suitcase straps. We have backpack straps. Sometimes there's an extra strap. Notice that I've gotten my cello to the left side of my chair. To get the bow out of the case, you may have to lift the cello up, unzip, and then find the bow. When we take the bow out, we are very careful not to touch the hair, only the stick, the screw, or the frog. The frog is this part right here. I set the bows carefully on my stand or on the chair next to me. And then I put my cello gently back down on the ground. Now, most cello and bass cases have two zippers. One very long one on the top and a short one on the bottom. First, I open the long zipper. And then I may have to get down off of my chair to get the next zipper. It goes down to about here. This makes getting the cello out much easier than before. Sometimes the case gets stuck on the pegs here. Be careful as you do this. If it does get stuck, my best advice is to bring the instrument in front of you so you can rest it against your body or your legs and keep it safe. And then carefully work the instrument's case off. We should have enough room to place the case comfortably behind you. Now the cello is almost ready for bass to get played. Next step I like to do, especially for my fourth grade beginners, is keep it on the floor and come over to the end pen. First we loosen, then we extend. What I do is measure from thumb to pinky. This is a good starting measurement. You may find that you need longer or shorter. If you're a shorter person, a shorter end pen. If you're a taller person, a taller end pen. When we get the right length, for me, I'm a tall person, so I need a long end pen. Then we gently tighten up the screw. You wanna make sure it doesn't slide around, so give it a good tight twist. Now, our instrument is very long, the longest it will be. It's important that just like when we cross the street, that we look both ways. I keep an eye on my end pen, and I check on the scroll to make sure it doesn't hit anything nearby. One hand under this part called the rib, the other hand around the neck. I carefully lift it up and put it in front of me. Please be cautious that we don't whap the end pin into the ground, but we lift the instrument up in front of us and gently set it on the ground. Now my cello is in between. We can check the end pin length with the hug test. Right hand underneath to the C bout on this side, left hand to the other C bout, hug it to your chest, and then gently land. If you're leaning forward a lot, your end pin's too short. If the cello is pushing you back, your end pin is too long. And if you feel like you're sitting straight up, your end pin is just right. A cello bow has about a pencil to a pencil and a half between the hair and the stick. Remember, only touch the bow hair with your eyes, don't touch with your fingers. Now we're ready to begin. Putting the instrument away. If you've used the bow today, the first thing we do is loosen it. But the last thing that we do is put it away. Let's set it aside for now. Next, 
we set our instrument gently on the ground on the left side of our chair. You'll need to get this end pin put in. You should also put the end pin away whenever you leave your chair or leave your instrument for a while. It's really easy for people to trip on it, and we'd like that not to happen. So even if it's just for a moment, it's nice of you to put that end pin away. Be careful of the little stopper on the end. This is here to protect you from the sharp point. Sometimes we want to take it off if it's slipping, but most of the time we leave that rubber stopper on. We're ready to put the instrument away. I find the easiest way to do this is to hold the instrument with a strong hand and with your other hand, pull the empty case around. Now this part's a little tricky. The bow pocket is always on the same side as the strings. So look for that bow pocket and if it's on the back of the instrument, you're in the case backwards. I'll give you an example. Here we have the bow pocket and it's going flat over the instrument. Uh-oh, wrong side. Not hard to fix, just lift, twist, and put it back in. Again, the pegs sometimes get caught, so be careful and gentle and it'll fall right into place. Now, we carefully set the instrument back on the ground to start zipping. This is safest for the instrument. It doesn't matter to me which zipper you start with, top or bottom. I just like to do it with the bottom. Last. Now with both zippers at the end pin, our cello is safe in the case. And I lift it up one last time between my legs to put away the bow. The bow will always go in the pocket tip first with the screw facing towards the sky. zip it closed so the bow doesn't fall out and I set my cello back down on the left side of my chair and I wait until it's time to put it in its home. I always lift from the suitcase handles first and I can carry it either by the suitcase handles, the backpack strap, or right in front of my body like this. This is good if you don't have to turn a lot because that makes the neck vulnerable. If you're going through doorways, this is the best way to carry the cello. A doorway can easily close on a cello and break it. I think it's best to hold it like this or like a backpack. And now I put it away. This is the bass part of our talk. Getting the bass out is a lot of work. Playing the bass is a lot of work, but that's why you're here. You love the work and you love your bass. So let's get right to it. No matter if you're a fourth grader or a fifth grader today, you are gonna take out the bow. First, I like to get the instrument secure so I can get the bow out of the pocket safely. It's gonna come out with floppy hair and we need to set it somewhere safe. Since I don't have any place on my seat, I'm sitting on the stool, I'm gonna gently put it on the ground next to me. Now I still have the base under control. I'm going to set it on the ground so we can do the zipper. As you can see, the base has lots of handles that makes it very easy to carry it around and make sure it doesn't get dropped. I always look where my base is going at both ends because this is a fragile part. Just like the cello case, there's two zippers, one long zipper that goes down most or if not all of the case, and another one on the bottom. Some bases have these little Velcro straps that protect the zipper when you're carrying it around. Sometimes you may have to move those aside. Here's the big zipper. And on the bottom is the little zipper. And the base case is pretty easy to take off after that. It kind of falls apart. Now, there's a lot going on here. Always protect your instrument. If there's anything you're gonna drop, drop the case. And I'll be like my little assistant. Now, be careful as you set your instrument down for the end pin step. Finding the right end pin length 
can take a little time, but most base end pins have little notches, and that's what we want to use. We have to use a little bit of thinking to make sure that the screw lines right up with the notch. I'm going to try this notch since I'm a tall person. And now I screw the screw in, twist that in, and I pull and see if that's got the groove. I think I've got it. Worst thing that can happen is if the base falls because you're not secure yet. All right, next step. The base is big. You've probably figured that out. One hand around the neck, one hand under the rib, lift, gently land, and then have a seat, or if you're going to stand to play, you'll stand. And then I check my base position here. Looking pretty good. I can reach all the places. When you're standing, this is about eyebrow level, and when you're sitting, it's about eye level. When we prepare the bow, we tighten it, of course. And for bass players, you will have a special rosin called Pops Rosin to put onto the bow. Putting the bass away. If you've used the bow today, step one is loosen the bow. You'll see the hair getting floppy, and that's when we stop loosening the screw. Set the bow in a safe place. Now, the base. We have to put the end pin away first. We will set it on the ground. Gently this way. I come over and loosen the screw. Gently put the end pin back in and then tighten the end pin. Again, the rubber stopper is important to protect the sharp end and protect us. This one's a little dull, but we'll leave that in place. Next, just like the cello case, I think the easiest way to put away the base is to stand it up vertical again. So straight up and down, strong hand on the neck, other hand reaches for the case, and I start by putting it around this way. Just like the cello, every single base case has the bow pocket in the front. So to check that you've got it in the right way, strings always go on the same side as the bow pocket. Now you might want to get the zipper started on this case while it's vertical. I always keep an arm around like a, like a side hug for my base. And then when it gets down too low, I gently lower my base to the ground and I make sure I'm always looking both ways so it doesn't have any accidents. Zip up the top zipper, flip the velcro on this one, reach down for the bottom zipper, flip the velcro, and now we've got one last step. What is missing? The bow. I like to do this, instrument back up, open the pocket, pick up my bow. The bow always goes tip down, screw to the sky bow in the pocket, ready to go. If you're a bass player, the best way to go through a doorway is vertical. It's not really easy to carry the bass sideways. That's why there's so many good straps here for carrying. Some basses do have a strap for backpack carrying. This one looks a little bit on the low side. I bet it would work though. Here we go. Shoulder. And then I'd always make sure to have a hold of these two too, as well, just in case. Be careful when you're putting your base away. It's as big as most kids in fourth and fifth grade. Let's talk a little bit about how the bow works. The bow works by this screw here, and you may have discovered at some point that if you unscrew the bow too far, the whole screw will come out. 
Now this looks dirty, but that's the way it's supposed to be. It should be a little dark and have a little bit of sticky grease here. That's good for it. Now you may have had this happen to you. Oh no, it's broken. Don't worry. It's the way it's supposed to be. You see the stick has a channel and that channel is for the frog's eyelet. See how that screw can fit in there? Well, that little metal eyelet is screwed into the frog. And when we screw righty-tighty, that moves the frog this way, and that tightens the bow hair. And when we go lefty-loosey, that loosens the bow and the hair gets floppy. Now, if this ever happens to you, you can either put it in the case and have Mr. T fix it, or you can gently put it back in to the channel Put the screw back in. You may have to push a little extra for that thread to catch, but you'll see it when it starts going tighter. See how that gap is closing and getting smaller? Now we know the bow is back together. And when we put the bow away, it'll be like this tight. All right, now you know how the bow works. And this design has not changed much in about 400 years. Two pieces of rosin. This is a special rosin. Hmm, how about that?